Welcome where you are at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family. And we are delighted to be welcomed into your home. We certainly would love to hear from you, so please send us an email with a question or any comment to Jim and Joy at EWTN.com. Well, today our guest again is Joel Stepanek. He is the Vice President of Parish Services for Life Team. He is also a Catholic speaker and author of several books, including Chasing Humility, Eight Ways to Shape a Christian Heart. Mm. And this beautiful book is available at EWTNRC.com. And we certainly enjoyed our conversation with Joel yesterday. Yeah. And it is about the pursuit of holiness and becoming humble and holy and pure in all of our thoughts and all of our ways. Well, and that's every day choosing to die to yourself and live to Jesus. Yeah. And um, a, a very simple <laughs> experience that I had the other day of just stupidity on my part. Um, I went, I was doing my kitchen coffee stuff and I walked over to the trash thinking I had my trash in my hand and I walked over to the trash, hit the thing and went to throw everything away and I had nothing in my hand. It was all on the counter and I really thought I was moving and doing yes. and I'm going and I, it was just, I stopped, my spirit kind of rested, it was just like, slow down, yeah. you, you have nothing in your hand, little girl, it's all on the uh, counter, you walked over here. And it, for me, it was a humbling moment as just to stop <laughs> me in my tracks and just to say, you really thought you had that. Like yeah. that was such a simple, yeah. mundane task. Yeah that I was not in control of, I had no possession of, and it was very yeah. humbling. And there are many yeah. instances throughout and the day. And that's part of the way of growing in humility, that kind of situation. And this is not for you in particular, but it just comes to mind. When God shows you you got garbage in your life, it's not enough that you know it. Throw it out. <laughs> Throw get it rid out. Of, get rid of the vices, get the virtues, and walk in the way of humility. Joel Stepanek, Chasing Humility. Plenty more to come. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Well, you are at home with Jim and Joy, and our guest today is Joel Stepanek. He is the Vice President of Parish Services for Life Team. If you haven't learned about Life Team, you need to have that brought to your parish. And he's also a Catholic speaker. He's the author of several books, including Chasing Humility, Eight Ways to Shape a Christian Heart. And this wonderful book is available at EWTNRC.com. And you can visit Joel's website. It's Joel Stepanek. Dot com. Well, we were having this beautiful conversation about humility that we can have for the rest of our lives. What are some practical ways that we as human beings, loving God, trying to serve God, can develop humility and welcome it as opposed to resisting it? What are ways that we can grow in practical steps to being humble humans? Yeah, that's such a key distinction, actually, Joy. I love that, like welcoming it. Because some people look at humility like, well, that's your kale salad, right? Like that's your, that's yeah. your vitamins, right. and yeah. I don't really like it. Um, yeah. I don't want to take it. But humility provides such a wonderful opportunity for us to experience freedom. And I think embracing humility, there's a real mindset shift there, isn't there? Mm -hmm. There's this quote from um, the early Desert Fathers. I love the writings of the Desert Fathers from you know, the first couple centuries of the church but it's uh, recounting a vision that one of the monks had. And he said, I saw the world laid with the snares of the devil. And I said, what can pass through them? And a voice whispered, humility. Mm. Like humility, when we embrace it, allows us to walk through the snares mm. of life that yes. catch us and trap us and make us slaves and make us unhappy. Mm -hmm. So there's some things I think people can do that are very practical. Humility is a practical thing. And um, I developed some of these pieces uh, just as 
practices from the Litany of Humility. I think one thing we can do to become more humble is to love others. Mm -hmm. There's that line in the Litany of Humility you know, that others would be loved more than I. Jesus grant me the grace to desire it. Well, we can do something about that, right? Mm -hmm. Like yeah. if I'm praying that others would be loved more than I, I can go love others more than I. Mm -hmm. I can give them that love. And I think that's one key piece that we could all take on immediately within the our families, within our friends, within our, our work yeah. workplaces. Yeah, we're, it is absolutely key. And the older I get, you know, the more I see that in the Lord's words. Those who give their lives away find their lives, and that that giving, that loving, mm -hmm. is at the essence of the Trinity family. Yeah. That's all they're doing. They're loving each other. They're giving to the other one. They're lifting the other one up. Jesus doesn't lift himself up. He lifts the Father up. The Holy Spirit lifts up Jesus. So it's this whole thing. And yet we're so protective here on earth, and we're trying to, to not fail, you know, fear yeah. of failure. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't want to be humiliated. I've been, you know, I mean, we're so protective of everything. And so we keep looking at that, looking at that, we get more and more anxiety and panic and everything yeah. else. If we would just give ourselves away and stop focusing on other people and do something for somebody else, you grow in humility. Yeah. And I think along with that, as we give ourselves away, we have to go back to something. And I think at the key of all of this is when we talk about loving others is being able to live in the love of God and to be mm -hmm. a part of the Trinitarian love of yeah. the Lord and go back to that font. We were talking uh, just back in the green room a little bit about that petition and the litany of humility, which I think is one of the most difficult ones to pray from the desire of being loved. Mm -hmm. I mean, like we were made for love, right? Like to right. be loved to others. Yeah. So it can feel kind of weird mm -hmm. to pray that, you know, there's two ways we can get rid of desire, right? by um, abstaining from something and rooting out the desire. And that's really important for disordered des desires. Mm -hmm. But then like we can get rid of desire by fulfillment. So like if I'm thirsty, I desire water. If I drink water, that eliminates the desire. I think that's the case for love. Like when we say, Lord, deliver me from the desire of being loved, we can respond to that by putting ourselves into the love of God mm -hmm. and allowing his ocean of love to satisfy that desire. If we're satisfied on the desire for the love of God, I no longer desire love from others that can be disordered. I desire what God can give me. I think that's the secret yeah. to humility is mm -hmm. living in that love yeah. because then it allows me to give it away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have everything I need yeah. and I can be content. Yeah. So what, explain to our family, can you be confident and humble? Like I could be confident knowing my strengths and my weaknesses, and I'm hoping that I'm participating in sincere humility. Mm -hmm. um, but can you be confident uh, to an extent with a lack of humility? Like what is the balance of being confident and humble and do they go together? Yeah, I think they absolutely do. And I think that's one place where people kind of get it wrong because there is confidence and then there is pride. Mm -hmm. And confidence goes back to being rooted in the love of Jesus Christ, I think. And it also comes back to being rooted in knowing who I am. I can be confident in my flaws and understanding where I fall short, where I'm weak. I can know myself, um, especially as it's held up to the truth of our Lord. And when I'm confident in who I am and who God calls me to be, I can endure humiliation without mm -hmm. it wrecking me and being uh, devastating. I can learn from my moments of humility and I can grow because I recognize I'm still on the journey mm -hmm. and I can remain confident in the gifts and talents that God has given me without becoming self-deprecating or even throwing off compliments. I think that's one area that mm. we struggle with that reveals a lack of confidence and a lack of humility. I wrestled with this a lot. People would say, Give an hey, example. Hey, thank you for writing that book. It was so wonderful. <laughs> Uh, it really uh, impacted me. Thank you. Yeah. And then I would say, oh, no, no, no. I'm just a depraved, yeah. unworthy sinner. Yeah. Praise God. You know, uh, he, he's, and I kind of throw things off, which makes you feel very weird because mm -hmm. you're like, I don't know that I want to compliment this right. person anymore. Mm -hmm. And takes what God has given me and kind of throws it aside. Mm -hmm. It's okay just to say, thank you. That's confidence. Thank mm -hmm. you. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. I'm really honored to have been able to write that and um, I'm glad that the Lord used it to yeah. impact your life. Yeah. That's different. Now you could swing the other way and say, oh, well, I'm glad you liked it. I knew that you would. It was so wonderful. Of course you loved it. I knew that it'd be great. You know, and that's not good either. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think that's, yeah, I think about husbands and wives mm -hmm. and expressing love to one another and, and saying to your wife that you love her, that she's beautiful, mm -hmm. that I... And there's some women that just can't take that. Like they're just like, well, no, I'm not, and I'm this, and I'm that. 
and it might go on for years where a guy is genuinely saying that mm -hmm. this is this is the best scenario with guys. Some of them use it to manipulate and other things, right? Yeah. Especially before marriage. So we say all these mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. But some men are genuinely saying to their wife, you're beautiful and I love you, even as they're aging. Yeah. Because it's not just physical beauty. It's the physical beauty is there too. It's the holistic beauty. And they only have eyes for her. Mm -hmm. And so that's it. You don't get all this beauty every place. But I'm saying that there are uh, women who just can't receive that. And that really is difficult for guys yeah. you know, over time because you're really saying, I'm just, th this is what you are to me. Yeah. And so women need to grow in confidence and have proportion about their thinking about beauty and what beauty is. Yeah. Or else you're never going to be able to accept the compliment. And that's really tough in that love relationship. It's just the two of you. Yeah. I think there's even a bigger issue that ties into, okay. Jim, of like gratitude, which is another humility practice. If we can be grateful for the things, the compliments that people give us, the affirmations, um, and then expand it to the broader gifts that the Lord gives us, I found that gratitude actually produces humility because I didn't produce mm -hmm. those things in myself. Lord, thank you for my husband and his affirmation. Lord, thank you for my wife and the ways that she yeah. continually loves me and looks after me. Lord, thank you for the gift of my children. I, Every single day, I encourage mm -hmm. people, write down two or three things you're grateful for, even if they're the smallest things. It changes my lens. Mm -hmm. And I recognize that every good and perfect gift, right, comes from God, from above, mm -hmm. that, uh, the first yes. chapter of James, right? Yeah. Um, and that produces humility. I didn't give myself those gifts, but my gratitude allows me to receive. Yes. And it opens me up more to be better at receiving the gifts that God gives, not because I deserve them, but because God loves yeah. me. Yeah, and even in, in the formation of your children, mm -hmm. in, in as they grow before your eyes and you recognize their gifts and their talents and, you know, you want them to be confident in their gifts but not conceited. And so mm -hmm. there's this, you know, you just say, hey, that gift that you've been given, you're pretty smart, you know? But it's not that you would be so smart that you would gain the world and lose your own soul. Yes. Like, it's pretty smart. You've you got to keep everything in check. <laughs> yeah. How can you put that at the service of others? I think right. when I raise my kids, it's like, y you affirm the gifts. I try to be specific about what I'm affirming, not just, hey, you did a great job, but you did a great job at how diligently you mm -hmm. colored inside the lines. Mm -hmm. It seems very weird that mm -hmm. it's so specific, mm -hmm. but I want them to know that's a very specific thing that you did. And then as they get older, it's how do you put that gift at the service of others? How mm -hmm. could you use that to love God and to love your neighbor? What can you do that Jesus has called you to do mm -hmm. in a unique way with how you've been blessed? Right. Yeah. And so much of this is, it's lived out over time. Mm -hmm. And some things have to adjust and change because you, know, you may have confidence at a certain point in your life. And maybe some of it's based on where you are at that point in intellectual ability that God's mm -hmm. given you or in, in appearance or whatever it might be. And then you hit another age point and it's not there anymore. You know, yeah. I mean, it's, it's not, it wasn't like that. And if you live in that and you keep comparing yourself to what it was in the now, you, you won't be confident. You won't be secure in the Lord because you keep comparing yourself yeah. to what it was in the past. So what does this mean for me now, Lord? Who am I now? Mm -hmm. I mean, I know I'm always the same person, but things are changing here. And so how do I find peace? How do I find joy in where I am now? Because things are changing, Lord. And so how can I be confident now at this point in my life and secure at this point in my life in you? Because yeah. I'm different and I don't feel as confident because I'm not hitting on all the cylinders or whatever. Mm -hmm. Or maybe there's new things you're doing now that mm -hmm. I didn't have before, Lord, and I can't see them. Yes. You know, like, cause I really yes. like getting old because I'm learning and wisdom but some of the other stuff, I'm just falling apart, you know what I mean? In various ways, and it's kind of scary. That's all a part of the deal. Yeah. You know, so don't, don't be afraid of humiliation. Don't be afraid that you're falling apart. What are you talking about, Lord? Because you know, I, I'm working things through this. I'm doing things in you that are eternal. Yeah, and I think that's why humility is such practice for any person at any age, because mm -hmm. you're right. As we get older, things change. Our careers change. Our abilities right. change. Our state of life changes. And humility lets us hold that all kind of detached, right? Mm -hmm. And be grateful for what was, and then to take yeah. hold of the new things that the Lord wants to give us. I'm not esteemed like I was. I'm not honored like yes. I was. Mm -hmm. Nobody consults me. I'm a wealth of knowledge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, you know, and, yeah. but, but to say, that's where the litany comes in and says, you know what, you have difficulties in these areas. Mm -hmm. You really want this more than you should want it. You yeah. may even be right, but, but you desire it. You mm -hmm. really desire it more than you should be desiring it. And you're fearful and you're living in this. So following Jesus is the end all. I mean, it's the way, but it's helpful to have words. 
It is. Because I, I see, I'm not following him as much as I think I'm following him. I'm blind. Right. And these words just kind of hit the nail on the head, several of them for us, right? It is. And it's a, it's a great examination of conscience, mm -hmm. even as a prayer. And it's an old prayer. Um, the oldest version of the Litany of Humility goes back to a book that was published in 1867 uh, called The Fervent Adorer, which uh, was written by an anonymous author. Um, and it's the Litany to Obtain Most Holy Humility. And mm -hmm. Raphael Cardinal Mary Del Val took that and added some pieces to it, which I think is wonderful how this prayer has evolved, but um, the prayer for humility is over 150 years old. Yeah. Yeah, that was interesting. You, I did not, I was not aware of that at all. I just associated it with the Cardinal here. Yeah. But you're saying, hey, there was, before his time, there's a document that has a lot of it in it, and then he did some further writing on yeah. it? Yeah, so Cardinal Mary Duvall took the prayer and actually added the last set of petitions that we have, Jesus grant me the grace to desire it. So the Holy Spirit moving through him, um, had him add to this prayer, you know, the things that fill us up where we have those disordered desires that go away or where there's fear. Mm -hmm. And so the version of the prayer that we have today rests there. And I say that because I think in the earliest version of that prayer published in 1867, it might be much older than that because it's published in a collection of prayers that were compiled yeah. um, in this book called The Fervent Adorer. And the person who wrote that, we have no clue who that is. Mm -hmm. so the person who wrote from the desire, from the fear of being forgotten, yeah. deliver me Jesus. Mm. We have no idea who that is. And I don't yeah. know, for some reason, that brings me tremendous comfort. Yes. That the fruit that we, that our work would bear, we may never know what that is. Mm -hmm. the, sows, the, the, the seeds that the Lord sows through us. Um, but humility trusts that like, the work isn't mine to begin with. Mm. And that at the end of my life, the reward I seek is that I would be as holy mm. as I ought to be. Amen. And that's the last petition. Now, tell our family, what does humility look like at home, at work, in all of our relationships? Is it looking the same, or do we have different practices with humility? I think there are consistent practices that are lived out differently in different settings. I think humility means giving praise mm -hmm. to others, you know, from the desire of being praised, deliver me, Jesus. Well, I can give praise to other people. We struggle with that at work because we think it's going to get people promoted ahead of us. Yeah. Now, this doesn't mean giving people credit for work that they didn't do mm -hmm. or for work that you did or not taking credit and owning up to work that you did. It's okay to do that. But sometimes at work, like, Joy does something great, but I'm afraid if I say to my boss, Joy did a really great job on this project. My mm -hmm. boss is going to say, oh, well, Joy, maybe she should get the promotion mm -hmm. and not you. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that's not always how it works, mm -hmm. you know? And people like to work with others who give credit and are affirming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We can do that. I think at home, at work, it means seeking forgiveness, even from our children. That's one of the things I'm learning. Sometimes I make mistakes with my kid. It is humbling to go to a seven-year-old mm -hmm. and be like, I'm sorry mm -hmm. that I told you we were going to throw the football this mm -hmm. afternoon, yeah. and instead I worked, mm -hmm. and I broke my word to you, mm -hmm. and I need to seek your forgiveness. Mm -hmm. As a dad, I don't want to do that. I want to, like, brush it off. Um, yeah. But mm -hmm. that's humility, seeking mm -hmm. forgiveness. I think finding ways to serve and to be unnoticed um, and not seek recognition for the love that we give. We can do that across the board in a mm -hmm. lot of areas. Um, you had said it on the live broadcast, it's an audience of one. Mm -hmm. Just Jesus. Just Jesus. In, in the book, it's pretty clear this has been a journey for you and a chasing mm -hmm. for you, you know, your own life. And so um, was this book just for you, but you've gotten it out there. What's your hope for it? You work so much with young people. Mm -hmm. How does this come into the work? Hope that you're bringing it to the work with young people, with others. What are you hoping that people take away from this? How could they use this book? Yeah, I think humility through Jesus is the path to freedom. It's the path to real happiness. Empirically, the secular world has studied humility and found it valid. It is mm -hmm. the key to successful leadership. It's the key to successful relationships. It's elevated as a Christian virtue though because it provides joy. And I think we're all seeking that. Young people are seeking that. Mm -hmm. And the world has provided them with errant paths to joy, mm -hmm. pride, um, success, money, mm -hmm. fame, recognition, when the secret lies in humility. For me, it, I rearranged the Litany of Humility, uh, which I felt I was in my rights to do because <laughs> it's been done before, mm -hmm. again, Cardinal Mary Del Val. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, but I rearranged it for me mm -hmm. in a way that made sense for me. And that's what's in the book. Uh, I shared that with a couple of friends and discussions we had about humility, and they were just encouraging to publish that. So it came really from my prayer and then the encouragement of the community around me to share it. So that's what I would hope people would find is maybe a different way to look at humility, not as something to be feared. I've had people tell me, I don't want to read your book because God's going to make my life terrible. Mm -hmm. That's not it at all. Like mm -hmm. yeah. humility, 
T and humiliations are opportunities to grow, to grow closer to the Lord. Don't, and that's my hope. Thank you so Excellent. much for sharing your own chasing of humility. It's a great blessing and you beautify the bride through mm -hmm. this thank work. You. Chasing humility, Ave Maria Press, eight ways to shape a Christian heart. Be authentic, growing in confidence, being grateful for today, loving others, giving praise, empowering those around me, becoming a mentor, breaking boundaries. Mm. So you can get this book and it'll be a great, great asset for you and for your loved ones. We'll be right back. Plenty more to come. Please don't go away. Welcome back where you are at home with Jim and Joy. And we have with us Father John Paul. Well, Father, what did you share? What did you think about Joel sharing on humility, chasing humility? Well, he shares out of his experience of um, ministering to young people. And I think that this will be a great uh, book for young people, mm. for our viewers, uh, maybe grandparents, parents uh, buying this for um, their grandchild, mm -hmm. their child, maybe as an early uh, stocking stuffer, they're mm -hmm. looking for ideas for Christmas. Mm -hmm. uh, Christmas is not too far away. This would be a great uh, book to put in the stocking. Um, yeah, the, what he was talking about in his book, just a few things I was paging through uh, his book uh, as the show was starting, and there was two suggestions. Uh, one of them was, um, I think it was a weekly practice of sacred scripture reading. Yeah. Uh, reading the scriptures for 15 to 20 minutes a day, mm -hmm. uh, a great way to get in the contact of who Jesus really is, what he's yes. doing in the Gospels. Uh, a monthly practice sitting in silence uh, for 30 minutes. That's hard to do for anyone, um, even for somebody that prays uh, consistently, just to sit in silence with mm -hmm. nothing in front of you mm -hmm. um, and converse with the Lord. Talk to the Lord. You know, Lord, who are you and who am I? Um, St. Francis would ask that question mm -hmm. back and forth to the Lord. Lord, who are you and who am I? Mm -hmm. And St. Francis' answer, I'm a useless worm of a servant without you. <laughs> I'm nothing without you. Um, one also, he said, um, and this goes back to the litany of humility about being noticed, mm -hmm. uh, the fear of uh, not being noticed. Do things for people that uh, they'll never notice. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think if we start to do those things, um, we'll grow in humility mm -hmm. because we're not seeking mm -hmm. praise of others. Uh, to do things completely unnoticed that only God will see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. We, it was a phrase, you know, blowing upon the sail of another person's life. Yeah. And we try to keep that in mind, you know, in our marriage, with our children, the interviews that we do. I don't know, is this boasting now? Am I boasting? <laughs> yeah. But what I'm That's saying great. is to have that attitude of who is this person? What's the book? What's going on? How do I blow on the sale of his life? Not me. You know, it's, it's your time. How do I do that? And if we're thinking that way, it keeps pride in check. You know, this is this is your this is this person's time when I'm in your presence. Who are you? What's going on? How can I hear from you more fully? How do I assist, be under you, to get out of you what you need to share? You have so many opportunities in dealing with people at her choice mm -hmm. that come in. There's mm -hmm. opportunities to bring them the presence of Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and that's one of the keys, right? For humility, listen to people, maybe mm -hmm. speak a little bit less yes. and listen more like mm -hmm. and attend to them. 75% of any good conversation is listening. Mm -hmm. Not so much talking, you know. Um, I do a lot of listening in the confessional, mm -hmm. not so much talking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When we're early in the priesthood, uh, one of our professors used to joke, younger priests tend to talk too much. <laughs> you know, I'm eight, eight years into priesthood now, I'm kind of Got, I think I've gotten to the point where I'm listening a lot mm -hmm. more rather than mm -hmm. trying to give advice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, 
Most of the time, people just want to come and they, they want to receive the absolution. Mm-hmm. They want to receive the forgiveness of God and maybe a few encouraging words. But most of the time, it's just listening. Amen. And that's what Jesus does. Yeah. yeah. Father, and we need to do too, listen Amen. to Jesus too. Close us with a prayer, Father, and a blessing, please. Sure. Family at home, may the Lord bless you and keep you. And may he turn his face to you and be merciful to you. And may he show you his kindness and give you his peace. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. 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 What a great blessing to be with you this day and to speak about matters eternal that touch the ground here but lead into all eternity. You're an important part of this EWTN family, and you are never alone. And you're always at home with Jim and with Joy. Bye now.